Hey guys, Engineer Wannabe here, and today I'm going to be talking to you and reviewing uh, the SBGA231. This is the Grand Seiko Diver, uh, but before we get started, the usual wristwatch check. I'm wearing the Grand Seiko SBGJ201. This is the Mount Iwate um, dial, white dial. Beautiful watch, 44GS case. It's a little thick, but it's uh, it's nice on the bracelet. It's nice on this strap. This is an almost shell cord of Let's go ahead and talk about the dimensions on the Grand Seiko SBGA231. Uh, so the diameter of the watch, uh, according to my calipers, is 44 millimeters. The thickness is 14 millimeters. The lug to lug is 50 millimeters. And the lug width is 22 millimeters. Uh, now I've started to weigh watches that I am reviewing, uh, long overdue. Uh, this one I weighed especially because it is titanium. And this watch, when it's sized to my wrist, is 129 grams. And this is a big watch on a big bracelet with a big clasp. It's still only 129 grams. It's amazing. It's a, it's a real treat to wear. Now, uh, one pro tip, the way you can tell that this is a titanium uh, Grand Seiko SBGA231 is by looking at the logo. The logo on the titanium models are gold. That's one way to, to quickly know at a glance whether it's the titanium one or the stainless steel one. Let's talk about uh, the watch, the way it wears. The watch wears way smaller than you would think. This does not feel like a 44 millimeter watch. It feels like a 41, 42. The end links do extend out, but it follows the profile of the lugs. Um, so the end links don't stick out any further than they should. I would still say that it is still a bit too big for my wrist. But that said, the, the main issue that I have with this uh, bracelet, I would say, um, is the fact that on the six o'clock side, you can't take very many links off. And so it's really hard to balance the watch on a smaller wrist. So I've taken all the links off on the six o'clock side of the bracelet. If I could take one more link off the six o'clock side and put one back in um, on the 12 o'clock side, this would balance perfectly on my wrist, except I can't do that. Um, I don't know why, I don't know why Seiko did that, Grand Seiko did that, but uh, so right now the swing arm is, is long and because the swing arm uh, extends out um, past my wrist because I can't balance it to the middle of my wrist, the bracelet is quite uncomfortable and it's really sad uh, because I really do enjoy this bracelet. Okay, moving on. Uh, the case is beautifully done. Uh, you can see uh, many different uh, polished and brushed surfaces. The lugs have a uh, are almost uh, cut in half. Half of the uh, each lug is polished, and half uh, brushed. And the the line of separation is incredibly sharp, as is the case with many Grand Seikos. Uh, I really like the the crown guards. The kind of the case kind of flows into the crown guard, so it looks very uh, very nice, very elegant. But uh, let's talk a bit about this this bezel. The bezel has a really really nice action. Buttery smooth. It is at the same time uh, very precise. Bezel insert is very nice. Now it's not a ceramic bezel insert. I've seen a couple of different uh, uh, materials being stated. Uh, I've, I've heard that it's uh, uh, an ADLC coating. We've also heard that it's a tungsten carbide bezel insert. Now it could be both. The paint that is on the bezel insert is really nice. It almost looks like an enamel. Now let's move on to the dial. The dial is really nice as well. You can see this is like a signature black for Grand Seiko. It's it's beautiful in that it's not exact, it's not quite black, it's almost a charcoal. The indices are perfectly sized for my taste. Again, uh, this is kind of subjective, but the indices are perfectly sized. They're not maxi indices like you'd see on, uh, on a Submariner, on the Rolex Submariner, but they're a little smaller and they are beautifully polished. And the hands, the hands are really interesting as well. 
you have a, a weird cathedral style hour hand and a huge arrow uh, arrow style minute hand that almost touches the uh, the rehot. The hands are brushed and it, they're beautifully brushed. And I'm so glad that they brushed it rather than polishing it. Uh, there's no way for the hands to disappear. They're very, very legible. Now, an interesting thing here is the fact that the date aperture is right at the edge of the dial. And this is how it should be done. Um, it matches perfectly with the nine o'clock uh, index. It's not too close to the center. Uh, or it's not somewhere in the middle where it's kind of awkward and, and uh, the manufacturer has to put a, a partial a partial index. It's just it's just right. There's no index. It just replaces the index completely at three o'clock. And in this case, um, usually I'm I'm not a fan of the date not matching the dial. But in this case, because it perfectly replaces the index, I think it looks really good. So let's talk a bit about the uh, the clasp. The clasp is interesting. It's stamped, um, but it's stamped with a thicker gauge uh, metal. So the metal is fairly thick, but you can tell it's stamped. Uh, and it has this really interesting on-the-fly uh, adjustment mechanism, which is why the swing arm is so long and which is why I uh, encounter comfort issues with the, with the, with this bracelet. But it's really easy to engage this uh, quick adjustment mechanism. You just press down on the flip lock, uh, press back on it, and you can easily adjust the uh, the the ratcheting mechanism. You can uh, squeeze it around your wrist uh, to your desired level of tightness right after that. Um, but the clasp is monstrously thick. Uh, it does balance out the watch really well. So the movement, the movement is a 9R65. You can see on the dial that it's a spring drive because, well, first of all, it's written there. Um, and secondly, because the second sand does not stutter, stop, or, or do anything. It just glides around the dial. Um, it's uh, very mesmerizing, very calming, and, uh, and very uh, very eerie in some, some ways too. But... Uh, to me, that's a that's a good thing. And spring drive is just a an absolute masterpiece of a movement. Um, I have spoken about it in a few of my Grand Seiko reviews, but uh, in a uh, in a nutshell, a spring drive is a fully mechanical movement. It has their usual gear train. It has the spring, um, the mainspring that stores the power, a rotor that winds the mainspring, and it also has a quartz crystal. Um, that regulates this and it's regulated uh, by replacing the escapement. The escapement is uh, an electromagnetic break. Uh, so the quartz crystal gives the timekeeping information to this electromagnetic break. The electromagnetic break engages or disengages or uh, you know varies in its resistance uh, to the, sp the spring releasing its energy and so it can speed up or slow down the seconds hand without any stutters um, and it's regulated by that that quartz crystal so it's basically a quartz watch within a mechanical watch the quartz watch is giving the information to the mechanical side of things um, and is regulating the the mechanical side but anyway that's um, a very crude explanation of spring drive uh, it's an amazing work of engineering uh, amazing, uh, amazing work in general. Um, and it took them uh, 28 years. It took uh, the creator of Spring Drive 28 years to bring it to fruition. Um, amazing. Just uh, absolutely amazing. The, uh, the power reserve on this Spring Drive movement is three days. And I do get that very, uh, very comfortably. It is incredibly efficient in its winding. It has the magic lever winding uh, system developed by Seiko. Um, very, very efficient. It uh, charges up very quickly. Um, usually within half a day, I will be up to a full three day power reserve. And you do see that power reserve on the dial, which a lot of people may not like, but I do enjoy seeing it there. It's it's convenient, but you know, ideally it would be somewhere else in the, in the back of the watch. But this watch does not have a uh, display case back. It is a shame that uh, this is a solid case back because the spring drive 9R65 uh, movement is a beautiful movement. 
It's the same movement in the Grand Seiko Snowflake. So anyway guys, uh, this has been a fairly quick review of uh, the Grand Seiko SBGA231. Uh, if you guys have any questions, let me know and I will try to answer them for you. Uh, but other than that, this has been Engineer Wannabe, Sanjay is my name. Um, it's been nice talking to you and uh, I hope you all are well and your families are well. Uh, you are all very, uh, very precious, very important. I, I thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.